Hey everyone, and welcome back to Leadership 101. This is in fact the last episode of this series. We really hope you've enjoyed these quick fire leadership lessons designed to help busy leaders invest in their leadership development. This content we hope has helped you to develop your gifts, to sharpen your skills and flourish as a leader. So one last time, let's do this. It was about 10.30 p.m. when my phone buzzed with a text message from a colleague. Tim, we've got a problem. And we had. <laughs> we had stuffed up big time. It was the night before our national youth event. Uh, the setup was complete and we were about to welcome 1,300 young people who would be traveling from all over the nation to worship God. Events like these ones are monsters to organize and they do not happen without a large team of hardworking volunteers who slog their guts out to serve the young people and youth leaders in attendance. Perhaps the greatest sacrifice for this team is that they commit to giving up the comfort of their own beds to roll out a sleeping mat and spend a couple of nights sleeping on a church floor. So back to that text message. The volunteers have arrived at their church, it said, but there was nobody there. We called the pastor, but they said that nothing had been confirmed. He came down and let us in, but it's not quite big enough for everyone. The guys and girls are in the same room. It went on with some makeshift solutions that had been found, but this was bad. We had dropped the ball, we'd messed up, and the volunteers were understandably upset. And that night, I could not sleep. I was devastated that we'd let our volunteers down and was determined to make it right. And there was only one way that that was going to happen. The next morning, I arrived early to ensure that I was there to welcome the volunteers in, and join them in, in their team meeting. Some of them looked tired. Some of them looked angry. All of them certainly had the right to be. So I, I stood up, I did the only thing that I could do and I said, guys, I, I, I heard about what happened with your accommodation last night and, and I want you to know I am sorry. That was not our plan. It was not our intention and we have not honored you here. It's my fault and it's not okay. There are no excuses and I'm sorry. We are gonna sort this out for tonight, but until then, we cannot do this event without you. So I'm asking that you would hear my apology, that you would forgive us, and that you would bring your best to God and the young people today. And then something strange happened. They burst into applause. Yeah, you heard that right, an actual round of applause from, from everyone. The tension was lifted, the posture of the team changed, and that was that. We, we left it there and the team absolutely smashed it that day. And herein lies the paradox of an apology. We fear that publicly admitting and taking ownership for our mistakes mean that we, we will lose the respect of our teams and young people. We worry that it will equate to broadcasting our incompetence such that onlookers lose their trust in us as a leader. When in fact, the opposite is true. When something goes wrong, people are looking for the leader who will take responsibility for it. This is the leader that they will respect. This is the leader that they will trust. This is the leader that they will follow. The paradox of apology is this, that when you admit your mistakes, your credibility as a leader goes up. There's one more element to the volunteer accommodation story that it's worth taking a moment to explain. Practically, I didn't actually have anything to do with the organizing of the accommodation. That wasn't, that wasn't my job, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't my fault. I was the leader. So ultimately, the buck stopped with me. If you are the leader, then it is on you to take responsibility for the mistakes of your team. Yes, those mistakes can and should be addressed with your team members in private, but never ever pass the buck onto another member of your team publicly. 
Whenever a leader shifts the blame in this way, their credibility is eroded. But in contrast, admitting your mistakes says something profound about your quality as a leader. It says something about your character, about your integrity. It shows people that you are trustworthy, that they can follow you and know they're not gonna get publicly burned for doing so. You know, sometimes as leaders, we can feel the pressure to be perfect and get everything right. The bad news is we aren't and we won't. But the good news is people are looking for an authentic leader, not a perfect one. Or as I've heard Craig Rochelle say, people would rather follow a leader who's always real than one who is always right. So when we stuff up, we are faced with a choice. Either we cover it up and pass the blame for our mistakes, or we come right out and we own it. And you will find that when you do, your leadership credibility skyrockets. This is the paradox of an apology. And at the end of this series of Leadership 101, let me say thank you. Thank you for engaging in this series. We hope it's been helpful to you. But much more than that, thank you for everything that you are doing to serve children and young people where you are. I cannot conceive of anything more significant that you could give your life to than passing on the gospel to the next generation. So please, 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 whatever you do, don't give up. Don't stop now. Keep going because what you are doing is important.